Oh, you're going to start? Yes, yes they did. Oh, but it's okay. Right. I think she restated. That was mostly restating what was in your email. Correct? No, there was some new stuff in there. Okay. Can we make that? Uh, at least. Uh, you want to say it again? You're welcome to. No, I, I, yes, I, I will right. give you uh, two minutes to hit the high points, especially when you consider new stuff, to get it on the record. Even yeah. though your document here is on the record, I, I want to give you the, um, yeah, that is the oh, entirely my fault. Video record. Give me just one moment. You said two minutes, Chair? Two minutes, please. Okay, give me. I would suggest you focus on the, the CEQA com comments and the um, your, your comments about trees. Focus there. Okay. Um, the timer should be up. I apologize for that. Okay, I'm going to start it again for two minutes after the three minute talk I gave was recorded. As uh, requested, I'm going to talk again about the CEQA issues where the city staff has, for over $8 million worth of projects going on now with the EOC generator, its drainage field, the dog park, the Lacey renovation, they've been filing negative CEQA uh, declarations, which means that there's no environmental and therefore also no historic review on any of these projects. But also add in the million dollars for the uh, Lolly Courtyard. In particular, I got, since I saw you last, the famous copyrighted plans to the EOC, its generator, and the Lacey from City Hall in July. And it shows clearly in plans dated January 2023 that there were two large oak trees removed, both over 55 inch diameter. City said for an emergency, uh, but there was no arborist report. It was just staff pencil whipping something. And those clearly show in the drainage field on the EOC plans right there. The drainage field is half the dog park. There's also been no discussion of any of these projects except the dog park about the best use of all this land, such as the conversion of Lacey to staff offices, including privacy fences, including quite a large one on the side facing the uh, uh, library now. So I urge you to ask city staff for all the documentation on the CEQA negative exemptions that has prevented any commissions in town, including the environmental and historic from reviewing any of these projects. I'm deeply concerned that this amount of money is being spent without having design reviews. And so far, the only design reviews have been, your commission was asked to look at two footprints in just one space for the dog park. Perhaps you can do more. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question of clarification, please. Yeah, the two trees to which you are referring are specifically the oaks that were removed from the area of the dog park, correct? Right. The right. Yes. Right. So okay. the, the dog, the dog, I just wanted to make sure those are the two you're talking about. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, are there any other? I have, I see here that there was a second. Public commenter? No, there's nobody here. Nobody? There's only public comment from people in attendance. Okay. Another clarifying question? Yes. Um, if you, sorry, if you, sorry, if you don't mind. Um, I just want to understand. So you, you're most concerned about like transparency and the, the existing trees, right? Is that? No, I'm concerned as a lawyer that the city follow all laws about environmental, and that includes historic review, because the historic review is under the CEQA process. And the city, for now over $8 million worth of projects, has just penciled with that there's no impact, like no trees need to be removed for the EOC project. And they said that, <laughs> and they filed that with the county and state, even though their plans show that two trees needed to be removed before they removed them. Okay. So that's either an oops mm -hmm. or that was deliberate to avoid review at the Environmental Planning and Historic Commission. Okay. Now people are concerned about that okay. because it's not what I want here. Mm -hmm. It's what the community wants and the commissions I think need to be used better instead of just being told staff designs things and you get limited choices. 
Thank you. Thank you. Any other clarifying questions? Okay. Um, moving on. Uh, so, Committee Member Jim Wing isn't here. Uh, moving on to items for consideration at action. Uh, Jimmy, I think you might be looking at the minutes. Am I? The pre oh my goodness. Yeah, it yeah. was. Because yeah. Alice did speak at our last meeting, and so did Jim. <laughs> The next item for agenda is yeah, items for consideration. Minute. But those, those are the minutes that you have up. So. Yes, and I have the minutes up. Okay, so reviewing the minutes. Okay, does anybody have any um, edits made to the minutes? I, I do not. Okay. I, mean, I have neither captured the meeting, the meeting action. Uh, the only, it's a tiny, tiny little uh, typo is down oh. in, under adjournment. Yep. That's why oh. I get parentheses. Uh, can you? Can you remember for the record what time? I think it was probably. Oh, it was 9.05. But yes, I can I can fix that. Uh, so adjustment. With that, do I have a motion? I move we approve the uh, minutes from Tuesday, June 18th with the amendments as stated here today. Second. A motion from uh, Commissioner Couture yes. and a second from Moore. Yes. Um, okay, so we'll take a roll call vote. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Couture? Yes. Vice Chair Corrigan? Yes. Chair Valadez? Yes. Okay, that passes unanimously. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Commissioner, <laughs> Commissioner Moore, I'm so sorry. <laughs> right in front of my face. Yes. Okay, that passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, moving on. I don't know. Okay, moving on. Uh, the Halloween outdoor movie night selection. Commission to make a final decision which movie to play. My staff give a report. Yes, thank you, Chair. Sure. Um, just briefly, <clears throat> you have the report in front of you. Uh, we, the Los Altos Parks and Recreation Department. Um, has a Halloween movie night is what we're titling it, um, and we've had this for several years, barring the the time off for uh, the lockdown for COVID. Uh, but um, each um, Halloween movie night, we actually have to get the um, what is it movie uh, right. licensing rights and everything. Um, so going through family friendly, children friendly movies and finding out which ones we can are able to get licensing and which ones are affordable for licensing, because sometimes Disney movies aren't really affordable. Um, but uh, we have pared it down. We pared it down to the movies you have in front of you on the attachment. I believe it was an attachment. It is. Yes, it's it was. up now. Oh, there you go. You have, I believe there's six movies up there. Is that right? Or five? Five. Five, five movies. Five movies. Um, so we want to give uh, the, the commission, as we always do, an opportunity to help us um, select the final movie. We'll be playing one movie that night, and uh, and then after the movie is chosen, if there could be some discussion, if there's the desire, the commission desires to uh, show up and either assist staff in doing what they're doing or actually post a table there and, and do something, and I can give you examples of what's been done by previous commissioners. So, so with that, that's the end of my report. Great. So, any just open discussion, and that what I'm what I'm proposing is we just do a brief open discussion, and then we have questions, comments, uh, and then we um, just do a a uh, a voting amongst them. Uh, I would suggest each commissioner would have two votes. You know, you're fine with any of two, and then we'll just see how the the votes stack up and see if there's a clear winner. If not, we'll we'll take it from there. Um, any questions, comments? Everybody's pretty clear that these movies are all family friendly. And uh, the question is, do you know kind of the general age range for children who might attend, or is it kind of random? It, it has been, to give you a brief history of it, we've done two movies before to try to target both age groups, although we lose a lot of the younger age groups for the older movie, so they don't stay the whole night. Um, so it is kind of a mid age range. I would say it would average about seven to eight yeah, years old. That's what I would say. Okay. Yeah, because we've tried with the older teen type movies, um, and we did have like a handful of preteens show up to that, and then we had the younger movies, and we had a lot of really younger kids. So the wheelhouse is really that seven to eight, the third grade age. Yeah. 
And all of all of these movies that I see here, they they've been uh, rated PG. So right. you know, um, I've actually seen all of the movies. Um, they all have their various elements of excitement and um, and comedy and uh, music in most cases. Uh, a lot of animation. Although Maleficent is a mixed media movie. Um, any comments, questions, suggestions? Yes. Um, my son is five, and he's very scared by The Nightmare Before Christmas. So just something to put out there. I think that that movie of all those, it actually is kind of, um, of, of the list, I think, the most questionable for me. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers, but a lot of those like monsters are kind of scary. I, I really enjoy that movie personally, but, you know, putting myself in the shoes. Yeah, I remember also being terrified of Bambi, so I, <laughs> yeah, I get what you're coming from. I, yeah, I mean, I think Minions is really safe. It's funny, too. It's really entertaining, I think, for a lot of ages. I have an eight-year-old, too, and he enjoys that. Great. Uh, did I see a hand? Yeah, I did. Commissioner Morris. Morris, please. I'm sorry that I couldn't hear what um, Manny was saying about the two movie option because I was concerned that all of these options were in my mind for older kids when I was looking them up and reading about them. And I've seen most of the movies myself. So could I hear why we're not doing a short or two movie option? Um, yeah, for, for reasons I think we described uh, the same as last year, um, we saw a lot of the little ones. It's it's a bigger crowd for the younger uh, age group um, to to stay for any length of time because when we did the last time we did two movies, we only had a handful of people stay for the second movie. Okay. Um, that that's that's the main reason, but also on top of that, we need two licenses, so it costs us twice as much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I'm in agreement with um, Commissioner. Um, with Jenna about the minions of all of them, that's the one I would say would be my choice. All right, so let's go ahead and just, um, you know, I set in your mind your choices, you know, and, and uh, hopefully you're not influenced by hearing somebody come before you. Uh, no commentary, just voting for your top two choices. Um, I'm just gonna go randomly. Uh, we'll start with Commissioner Morris. What are your top two? In order, Minions and Shrek. Thank you. Commissioner Corgan. So, say Minions, number one, Shrek, number two. Shrek, number two, what was your first? Minions, got it. Commissioner Moore. Honestly, I have the same lineup. Minions, number one, and Shrek, two. Funny. Long green. Mr. Couture, I concur with my fellow commissioners. <laughs> Minions number one, Shrek number two. I love all of them. Um, my kids saw them when he was a baby, he was fine. So I will go with the group. Minions number one, Shrek number two. So can, we will give you those two choices, uh, if that's all right, just in case there's any issue with the license. Any issue with Minions? Yep. Then we'll go to the Shrek, all right? Um, and I had to research. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Good choices all around. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so with that, the second part of this is uh, any discussion that the commission wishes to have uh, on availability on October 19th. And that was October 19th. The people have their um, calendar. Um, so, so really the question is, if the commission thinks that they want to do something on their own, that, you know, the commission, this is a time to discuss it. That's when it's usually done. Um, if the commission just wants to help out, Bridget Matheson emails right there. Just go ahead and email her if you're available. That's all. Okay. So have we determined which part? Do, is it great? Yeah, great. Um, do we have, would, would anybody like to set up a table uh, to take input? from the community or to conduct a little activity, whether it's for the babies or in general. Uh, Teresa, did, could you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Okay. And by the way, Commissioner Ye has shown up. I, I already marked it at okay. 652. That's right. Any interest? I think that would be nice. 
to have a table. I don't know for how long it's probably not putting in here. You probably wish to do it like at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. It's light still. Um, it touches by then at seven o'clock. Probably we hand out our brochure if we have it. And does that look like you have a beer? Yeah, but we still want to. If we well, there's a table in front over here. Sure, but we need to man it so um to, to, to occupy it. I think it. Um, unfortunately, I'm out of town that weekend, so I can't. But uh, is there a show of hands of anybody that's available? Um, I know the youth commission likes being part of this. Okay. They're usually there with their friends. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, anybody from this commission would like to take the lead on that? Commissioner Morris, am I seeing your hand? I'm I'm interested in um, helping do a table, and I think it would be nice to have a little activity that we uh, help with. And it's good. I think about thirty minutes before. I don't know if staff can let us know, but you know, just help keep the kids busy, maybe an hour even um, with an activity. And I'm fine participating in it. And. I mean, I can work with staff on what we want to do, or we can two commissioners can work on it, whatever. Right. Um, didn't, didn't we have the glow sticks last year? Teresa? I think we did. I think yeah, so. That's what I thought. There were snacks and glow sticks available last year. Yes. Yeah. It was that was all staff. Do, do we have a budget to do something like that again? <laughs> Depends on what you want. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Something like glow sticks, I'm sure we'll figure that one out. Uh, just depends on, on what, what the commission decides to do. Um, let me also remind you, there's still another meeting between now and that event. So if you want, if you've all decided, even if it's just a yes, the commission is interested in doing something, those ideas could be discussed at the next meeting. Okay. Just For now, I, I would like to um, ask you, Commissioner Morris, to kind of take the lead with staff on, on organizing something and then solicit volunteers um, to the extent that we want to involve or communicate with the youth commission. Um, you know, you can see that channel uh, and, and get this to happen. Thank you. Okay, okay. I'll Bridget, do it. Bridget Matheson can help a lot on this. Yes. I didn't hear, but oh, Bridget Matheson. It's in the right. I can work with her yeah. easily. Okay, and um, Commissioner Ye, if there's somebody on the Youth Commission you think we should reach out to specifically, perhaps you could uh, let it, let me know or let Bridget know. Yeah, I don't know who's on it anymore, but yeah, I can do it. Okay, thanks. Great. Okay, our next item three is artist interview. Interview selected interview the selected artist to discuss the council chamber steps project. Um, staff report. Uh, yeah. So um, the. Okay. The commission, Park Commission, uh, at the last meeting selected Adrian Littman as the artist to propose a scope of work, art, and price to fulfill the work requested for the council chamber steps and the plan of curbs. Um, the commission will listen, actually. Um, Adrian is with us, and he's just walking in right now. He's coming in to uh, to give us a short presentation of his ideas, and he does have experience, as I said before in this area uh, of working with cities. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can do that. Um, and so he'll go ahead and give a short presentation. And then once uh, those ideas are, are put out uh, coming from his direction, you will have the opportunity to have further discussion with him and post any questions and give him an idea. And he'll come back to the commission uh, with his final proposal later. With that, thank you, Adrian. Well, thank you for having me. Just so you know, there's one person that's on uh, Zoom or whatever we use. So make sure you talk loud enough so she can hear. I'll talk. Thank I'll you. Talk. Okay, so uh, we're talking stairs, right? Yes, sir. And um, from what I read initially on the request, it was something that you want something painted, some sort of a mural painted on those uh, risers. Um, and I was thinking, uh, you know, painting things don't last. And um, I visited the place, I took measurements and pictures, and you know, that's a place where people kick it, and I see signs for the most people. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I think the last thing you said, you see signs for? For the skateboards. No skateboards. No skateboards. Uh -oh. That's gonna make it easy for me. <laughs> so immediately I thought that, 
probably the idea of painting may not be appropriate. So we can be even durable. Um, durable in the sense that uh, if the kids who still use the skateboards in spite of the sign that uh, would not get damaged that easily. And if it gets damaged, since maybe people got material, then it's easy to fix and not cost a lot of money. So it's all this practicality that needs to come in place. So <clears throat> I also look at that and I said, uh, the riser being so narrow, it's difficult to do a lot of detail. Uh, anything that's figurative and you want to reference history or something like that, you do that in a small manuscript, you know, and you cannot do it on, on those risers. And um, also, um, I was thinking maybe the only two options that would be appropriate for the space would be either go abstract, which is very common, something that ties into the style of the building. Those are like 50s or 60s type of buildings, right? And keep the character. Or something figurative, taking from the surrounding parks and nature and use little animals and flowers and all that. Very neutral, you know, something that would not really be in your face. Um, something like that. And then I thought maybe that space is just limited and maybe lost. Mm -hmm. So that's why I intended to go further if possible, even above the entrance and a little bit on the side or consider the walls. Or the that's pretty much up to you what eventually you want to uh, approve you know, for this. So I think the initial thing that I, when I present you is this, when you have the stairs and then you have a little bit of this space on each side and then stuff above that. And for that, we either can use metal that's going to be laser cut. We have choices of using uh, core 10. We have a sculpted core 10. What is that material? Core 10. It's this rusty material. How do you spell that? C-O-R-T-E-N. Mm -hmm. And you, you have a sculpture right here. Yeah, it's a material that gets rusted, but the rust does not penetrate, does not advance once the process is over. Or we use copper, because you can get a greenish patina, which is very nice. Or go porcelain. You know, we cannot do ceramics, but it's too soft, I would say porcelain or um, stoneware for that. And do either painted uh, uh, tiles or some sort of a mosaic or a combination of Tiles and the little mosaic. Yeah, so we have options and possibilities, you know. It's all up to your taste, your desire, and whatever budget you want to allocate for. It. So then I went a little bit further in my wild thinking, and I thought maybe we can extend it to the both walls, you know, eventually. In fact, the sun maybe is one. It's enough. So now for the stairs, let's go to the stairs. So this is a model of the stairs. That's the real size of the, the right size. An actual size. Yeah, an actual size. Um, they're not all the same size. There are three risers and it starts from five inches, five and a quarter, five and a half in height. And they're curved. And even there, the edges are not gonna go on a so anything that would be done would be labor kind of intensive to adjust, make patterns, make it fit in there and um, keep this nose, you know. Um, Full nose. Yeah, it has to be done to code. We cannot, you know, mess around with this thing, you know, which is not a problem. You know? And then just have the paint on top and maybe a little bit on this side. So this is an example of a laser cut core 10, which is a solid material, can be very, very thick. This can be abuse. You can kick it, you can scratch it. If it gets scratched, it gets back the rusty finish by mother nature, the humidity in the air and all that stuff. So you don't need to do almost anything to it. Oh, sure, yeah. It rests upon the concrete? 
or do you put a base underneath it? Uh, we can, yeah, I would probably seal the concrete. And one thing that you can do with this thing, maintenance wise, maybe in two, three, four, five years, power wash. Very easy, you know? So that cleans up the concrete and may not take much of the rust finish and then it rusts back in two or three days, it's back to what it was initially. So does any, I, I assume that the, the material then is exposed to the environment so the patina can form? Yeah. Okay. So then it seems like junk or algae or mold might get underneath the metal between the concrete and the metal, wouldn't it? Well, um, we try to avoid that by um, attaching this thing to the concrete with the industrial uh, epoxy. Ah, okay. And also, it's going to be bolted in, small little, you know, bolt into the concrete. So it's going to be a seal all around and in between. And uh, if here and there you get a little bit, it's not affecting anything. It's, you're not going to see it. And as I said, power washing cleans up everything really well. Mm -hmm. And it might take years to do that. No. And another version of that is using, if you want more color, because we cannot put any color behind it. It's not going to last. No. And to uh, maintain it and come in with a brush to correct things, it's, it's a nightmare. We cannot do that. So we have. Are you proposing that just for the risers as well as the ancillary elements that you show in your? in your diagram, in your photograph there? I would propose this thing just for the risers because it's the one section that's abused. So on the side, we can continue with the same design and use metal, or to have more color, we can use uh, tiles. So this would be an idea of using copper that get this patina that also is nicely maintained by Mother Nature. If we want some color behind, we might put yeah, a layer of tiles, and then put this thing on top. Cannot go too thick, you know, because we still have to respect the code for this thing, but it's possible. It's an option. <clears throat> and uh, also, cleaning this thing up does not pose a problem. Very easy. Power wash. Even uh, having the tiles behind, maybe just a regular hose, you know. Once in a blue moon. Can, can you there. see these, Commissioner Morris? Oh, no, no, no. Can, can I ask you to walk up to the screen and just briefly show what you're talking about? No, okay. No, uh, could somebody? Yeah, we yeah. can. We can do it. If it's with one with one one shot, we can go This is here. I can. I can see that. I got used to doing all kinds of stuff. So the green one, what metal did you say that one? It's carpet. Yeah. Okay. And you can balance that. Yeah. 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 Right. And um, of course, I would induce a patina. Thank you. Yeah, it gets maintained by Mother Nature in the way. Yeah. Right. The greenish color. And the, the tiles are porcelain. And the tiles are porcelain, yes. Yeah. In your experience, how often does the copper get stolen? Yeah, I think uh, it's good. Because Yeah. Whenever it's possible, they will yeah, steal it, yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, except that, in, in this case, if I would use that, the whole thing is going to be smaller sections, not a big one. Um, for install purposes, uh, it's all glued in with epoxy. And you got the concrete anchors. And and it's going to take a lot of effort to take it off. It's not like cutting a hole or some wire. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, that to take it off is going to be a lot of work. And the patina might deter people, right? Because it's no, green. Sure. You don't think so? Okay. No, I will stay there and it doesn't, even in time, it keeps on being green after the green looks beautiful. After that, yeah. it's yeah. I was just wondering if maybe it would deter theft if it was patina. You know what I mean? Like people wouldn't realize that it's copper. Um, the ones who know about copper and yeah, they'll know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Chair yeah. Morris has raised her hand again. I was just going to say that we're right by the police department. I don't think it, it would take quite a bit of effort to remove the metal from the stairs right by the police department. Yeah. yeah. I think we'd be okay. It's not easy to just cut off. The patrol is always going in out of that driveway. Yeah, so. this would be a lot of work with chisels and stuff, and it's not easy to do that. 
Okay. And especially that it's a small little pieces, you know. So that's another option. And if you want to go color and, and do porcelain or do the uh, stoneware, once again, we can go uh, with Mother Nature elements like that. Yeah. So, so here you're just. It's painted, uh, glazed on porcelain and fired. Okay. Oh yeah, high, we'll right um, high, uh, high fire. High fire. Yeah, because yeah, porcelain requires you know high fire. Yeah. Thank you. Or is it, uh, is it one large tile or is no, it no, a small tile? No, no, it has to be small because it's curved. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but they have to go in small little sections to follow the curve. Yeah. And if that's not one option, or if you can go yes. abstract, you can go with something very decorative, neutral, colorful. Happy, pleasant to the eyes, and you're not requiring a lot of thinking about what it is. So, these are your options, Colonel. What a great idea with the metal. If you, I mean, what a great idea with the metal. Thank you, Manny. We hadn't even talked about that. Yeah, I love it. Because of thinking that you walk on it, and you know, you eat it, and some people might decide to go over with some heavy Thank you. Yes, I don't know. So you need something better. Than so and you don't have to worry about anything. Perfect. Know. Thanks. So, you know, like, I do many things like that even as a sculpture, the base always I'm trying to make sure that you cannot do much to it. Would you mind passing around the actual samples too? I would love to see the okay. so, Yeah, is that okay? And maybe uh, one of the metal ones? Okay. Well, we can get that. Yeah. That's okay. Can we do that? Okay. Yeah. Super heavy, but yeah. okay. the metal one for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I love to. And also talking about the uh, uh, porcelain, it's uh, agreeable to expand this thing on top of the entrance or on the walls. I have a sample. Of it. It's a heavy sample. You can see the quality of it. So it's being away from people which can be three-dimensional, can have, you know, I would not do this on the stairs, but if it's up somewhere on the walls or away from reach, then you can have this like three-dimensional low relief type of uh, stuff. When you when you rendered these um, this example, <laughs> so close beyond the risers, and you've gone on. Thank you. Building, you've gone on the building side as well as the um, the freeze on top, um, and also over to the um, landscaping planter area. Right. Um, are Are you suggesting mixed um, media or to pick one particular style and stick with it throughout? Um, I would say probably mixed would be good because of the stairs. So use the metal on the stairs, but wherever you have areas that are not reachable to be destroyed, then you can go color. Okay. So my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Director, it, the current facade of the building is board and batten. Is that true? Is what? Board and batten, the sheathing on the building. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, that needs to be researched. And it looks like it's uh, some sort of wood. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. The reason I ask is because to the extent that the surface of the building is uneven, you know, because with board and batten, it's sheets of wood with strips of wood on top of that. Um, well, um, in situations like this, the uh, porcelain. Uh, Elements would not go directly on the wall. Right, you have some kind of a frame or yeah, yeah right, like that. This is party board. Party board. Yeah. Cement. And yeah. these get assembled, and sometimes on a big surface, yeah. along the design. This is not yeah. one piece, so it's going to be cut like this. You put them together, and when you grow out that, you're not going to see the joints. It looks like it's one big piece. Got it. But it's on cement board, and then behind it, you can have some space. That's not a problem. It's going to be flat. And... Okay. 
Is this design then only feasible on the facade of the building? We couldn't do something like that on the risers on a smaller scale, this medium? Yeah, because having been a three yeah. dimension, I mean, that kind of sticks out. Yeah, perhaps we could stick that wheel. Because the accident has to be short on the stage. Right. Right. And make sense. It's just fine. Yeah. Um, the thing is, the thing that strikes me is that if, if we go with this, um, the the corking, Scorten, yeah. It's such a natural color that it could complement any painting or tile that we do it elsewhere. Yeah. In the building, the walls are exactly. kind of dark and brown. It, it yeah. can blend in, can blend um, in blend very in. easily. Whereas if we had did something very colorful here, it would be more difficult to blend it in with whatever we do above it. Um, I like this yeah. as a neutral base. Yeah. That, that's what strikes me. No, my um, yeah, there are options, you know. And it's okay. a, what about factors like weight, just sheer weight? You know, our buildings are old. Um, we can talk to one of your engineers, and uh, I think they have an idea about uh, what's the weight per square foot. Um, on the stairs, there's no, that's not an issue, or on the sides of the stairs. But uh, for the walls, uh, as I said, we can, um, if they're so fragile, which I don't think they are, the, would not take uh, this is going to be probably like three four pounds per square foot which is not a lot okay but if they object to that then we can install some vertical boards and then so attach this to that and have just you know probably yeah, adding it works up for the chambers it is yeah. it is board and batten but i don't think it's a problem okay. i mean buildings are still solid all right um any any other questions um, obviously this would talk, we, you know, there's money involved. To, yeah. The more we expand sure. this, the more expensive. Yeah. Um, did you consider the, the continuing backdrop for these plants? You know, the, the, the yeah. ADA ramp that goes off to the left? If you, if you want to, sure. Okay. Yeah, anything that's possible to be covered and doesn't interfere with the uh, landscape. Yeah, I would desire that. Sure. I would suggest that as you craft your um, proposal, that you make it increasingly modular. You know, yeah. we yeah. we add this, then sure. we add this, and we add this, and we can kind of decide where our, where our yeah. budget lies. Absolutely, um, it's possible. You know, with great wishes to go big, but yeah. we have to do whatever we can afford. Absolutely. Um, and of course, if this goes through whatever you decide to, to do, I need to make uh, real size production drawings anyways for me. Yeah. And I can bring you those and put them down on the floor mm -hmm. and look at them and see all the details and how the thing is going to look like. Okay. Um, Director, should we, should we um, if, if everybody's done with their questions? No, I have a question. We, when we um, open this up for submissions, I'm trying to re recall the exact scope of the work. I thought it was risers. And I think the last time we met about this, we talked about it, including the ramp. But um, does anybody, so I just want to make sure I understand the scope of the project. And, and what I'm hearing is, we can expand it, but I'm wondering, can we expand it? Because when we asked for the um, submissions, we asked for a very specific area to be submitted for. I'm not speaking that very well, but anyway, so can anybody remember exactly what the um, request was? In terms of the and, request for proposal, I mean, I remember in the discussion, we talked about this idea of you know, being able to do a minimal amount by either risers and then expanding beyond that. And several of the, some of the su submissions did show more expansive yes. scope. And we knew that that was going to come down to budget, um, as well as obviously the council has to approve, right? Our decision is to scope as well as budget. Most likely. Most likely. Yes. Most likely. Yeah. Right. So, um, but in terms of the actual RFP, I don't recall those words. Um, can anybody help me with that? I'm looking for it. I don't, is, how is it relevant at this point? That, that is is it? That's what I'm asking. I'm asking the relevancy of it. 
That's, is it relevant? Do we need to worry about that? This was not narrowed down. Okay, yeah, it wasn't narrowed down. It's not narrowed down, so it's up to us okay. to advise and, and recommend. And okay. that's why I would like to suggest a modular approach in our recommendation. That's fine. I just want to make sure we we're staying where we were supposed to be staying. Thank you. I would also suggest that our minimum proposal that we recommend to council, frankly, is more than the risers, that we do some things just beyond that. But then we can expand from there with and allow the council discretion to decide. So, Chair, um, Jenna and I went and looked at the ramp, and we are a little concerned about could he do, but now that he's got the metal, maybe he can do the ramp. I just couldn't see how you could do the ramp with tile, but I think with metal, it could be very well be done. Do you agree? The walls of the ramp, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. I think the concerns were um, like railing, railing, then, gardening, yeah, overflow from you know rain and stuff like that. But the metal would be great. I really you like the metal. I didn't consider that. I didn't even see it. I know there is a ramp on the left side. Yeah. So well, the reason being is we don't want to not take care of the handicapped people in the design. We want to make sure we're being equitable to both people that can walk and both people that can roll. Okay. Yeah, just for my own edification, how does, um, I'll just use this. It like it, um, let me see if I can how does put How does putting any art on the outer face of this ramp hurt, uh, compromise the ability of um, ADA? You so the it. ramp goes like this, and I couldn't figure out how you do tile on that. But it's clear you could do you could cut the metal oh, like yeah. this, super yeah, easy. You can do tile on that. You can do either. Yeah, this is like this is like all Gaudi style, right? And you just stick it on anywhere, anywhere. Well, if you're doing the front, like the facade, there's plants there. So I mean, you'd rip out all the plants and then just not have any landscaping there. And but so we're talking about the interior ramp. So we were thinking like you we were talking about like the interior walls of the ramp. And I in that case, I mean you could certainly do that. I I was thinking of the outer expression. Um I think the inner putting art on the inside, if you know, like a wheelchair is scraping the sides or anything like that, we could damage it. I was thinking more decoratively on the outside too, because you have these you have all this beautiful art and then we have these concrete walls. And as to landscaping, we've put Carexes or grasses and strap strap grasses there for now, but it doesn't mean you have to do that. It would be pretty easy run a beautification project with the community and plant lower beautiful plants underneath this beautiful art on the walls. I mean, I think the landscaping, the softscaping is something we could always build around yeah. the hardscape. Um, but, so like going back to what Terry's saying, just to get like really granular, we're talking about like the experience of entering the um, city hall and it's like, People that are taking the ramp don't, they're not experiencing the exterior, if right? Like, they're, to the exterior, if you're on the wall, they would experience that. Yeah. If we do that, but we have to determine what the facade is, if it is board and batten. I hear what you're saying. So, yeah, for sure, anything that's on the interior of the ramp walls, the rails, probably shouldn't have any relief on it. I would suggest or something less breaking than the tile, maybe the metal, as you said. Um, and then, but then also we have the option of doing something on the vertical walls to to make the ramp experience beautiful, so that they're looking as they're coming up the ramp. So I think I think that's an important consideration. And thank you for bringing it up. So you know, there's there's a kind of even more extensive view of this art. It's all up to you decide exactly what you want, and uh, and there's also the possibility of over time adding to this art. Sure. Okay. You know, design it modular, certain section that look good the way we're done, and then you can add to it in the future to what extent it still looks good. It can be done, yeah. Okay. So it's pretty much up to you to decide what you want for now. Uh -huh. And now in terms of surface, materials, okay. and if I know that, can I go and make the real measurements and the real layouts mm -hmm. and the production designs and show it to you? And yeah. Color samples, and it's, it's a process, you know, to and until it gets approved to be including the the, the laser cut. Yeah, yeah. 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 Commissioner, no, you have a comment? Uh, Manny, is the city going uh, going out outside for sponsorship on this? 
sponsorship for this project? No. We're going to do a little thing and then go on. No, it'll just be, it'll just be a project. It's an art project under not Park and Lou. It's under the art fund. It's under the art fund. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions for anybody? This has been excellent. You've opened our eyes to some new media, and um, thank you for that. So the next steps, uh, Director, would be for us to to do what? Whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as discuss it now. Some guidelines of what the project should entail and yes. what we want him to use for stuff. So the question is, do we want to have a discussion after this to formulate that and then we deliver it to him yeah. or do we yes. want to just deliver it live? Because yes. I'd rather do the former than the latter. I'd rather us to create a document, to be honest. Oh. Right. Which is for us to create a document? Yeah. yeah. To create a document that says, here's, here's what we like. But we would like to have a discussion with you on the type of art, the style of art. Right, because he has he has just shown us an example with this is kind of nature. There's a there's a lizard on there. There's a ladybug or something. Sure, if if I may. Yes. Um, what we could do is you can have a light discussion on their ideas and suggestions that you would formulate this document. We could actually send this to Adrian, mm -hmm. and then maybe invite him back for another meeting yes. and finalize it there. Yes. Right. So now, so you'll be able to give him an opportunity to narrow down because he just laid out a lot of things in right. front of you. So, so rather than yeah. drag you through that, I think we have, uh, we've asked all the questions as to feasibility, how it's attached, its durability, that it can be hung on the wall, it can be bolted into cement, it can be squealed, you think it's the, you know, Maintainable. We know that that's more fragile. Ceramic is more fragile than the metal. Um, yeah. I think we've gotten all the feasibility and durability, uh, applicability things. For now, it's us designing the design, the design input we want to give, like the kinds of designs that we want in mm -hmm. the art. Yeah. Whether we want it to be nature, whether we want it to be abstract. He gave us two. You know, it's actually three: nature, figurative, abstract. Right. So we need to decide which one we want to go. Do we want neutral colors? Do we want bright colors? Um, do we want something, if we go with some elements that are metal, like the risers, then the colors are going to have to complement that um, or be analogous to that. You don't want them to clash. Right? Right. So, um, you and know, the extent of it, you know, yeah. we can have that conversation in front of you, or if you like, we can go back and forth and then have another meeting with you to we can have another meeting, yeah. And you probably might need time to discuss yeah, it. more helpful for you because you do you have to go back to Santa Rosa? Yeah, that's not a problem. Okay. It's an hour and a half drive, you know. Okay. <laughs> I drive to Southern California 10 hours on a regular basis. To, so you're, you're always welcome, Adrian, to <laughs> remotely uh, come in to the next meeting if you want. Yeah, no, it doesn't bother me. It's you're, okay. You're you know, if you want some cold falls on this thing and cut themselves, they just have to get a tetanus shot and they're good. <laughs> That's fair. Um, all, I've done that. all this uh, laser cut stuff does not have any sharp edges. Yes. Yeah, no, that's done by hand. Okay. You know, I did it as a sample, but uh, the material is much heavier yeah. and uh, it's very smooth, and all the edges are polished. So you can run your hand like this, and it's not going to. Yeah. yeah. I know that for sure. Probably no more dangerous than the cement. You're right. Yeah. Beautiful. I think yeah. that we'd be happy with any of it. So, but um, but it, I, I don't know how familiar you are with Los Altos, but do you, do you have any thoughts or suggestions or recommendations? Yeah, sculptures in the city. <laughs> you, you, so know? you don't know about yeah, it? I, I, I know. I know. The yes. The really fun one on El Monte and the. Right. That's, well, right. That's, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 The and, people's village. And there is one in what is that park? Uh, 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 I forgot the name of it. Uh, Monty and Springer. And what does it look like? It's, it's this big black, colorful wood painted. It's, oh, it's in um. Yeah. You have a brochure. Is it on the brochure? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, we can do that. I I they are from the um we recently merged the arts commission into the park, so they're very familiar. Uh, and okay. I'm just getting familiar with all the because I come from the park side, getting familiar with structure. So. Before when they had the temporary things. So so given that, given, that, yeah. given that, do you have any suggestions on which direction you would maybe suggest we go? 
given the architecture, given the landscape? Nothing in particular. I think either one can be done to kind of fit into the whatever okay. the building is, okay. and it's pretty much uh, you're the one living with it every day, not me. <laughs> you have to have something that you like, because okay. I might like it for five minutes now, but then I'm not going to see it again. So either yeah. option is good, but it's finally a matter of preference. I whatever think, you think. I think we're going to need the most help from you is in color. Um, if we implement any tile aspects, we want to make sure that we're being changed with the surrounding environment. Um, there is ways to do it these days. Anything is possible. And sometimes people go to, okay, let's be muted and everything blends in and blah, 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 because people want to be calm and when they walk in and do this. Other people say, no, we have to have a shocking thing, right. like an accent. Yeah. You know, and people go, oh, what is this? Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of your preference. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. attitude towards things and that's the same thing with buildings you know they make buildings all of a sudden the, the building is like this why did you do that you know right so it's whatever is the philosophy of life of your community you know or group of people that live around these things what do they want maybe you should ask the community you'll hear a, a, we get nine thousand different you'll hear a thousand different things <laughs> I thought that was part of your presentation. You know, who are the people who usually walking through those stairs every day? Right. Some, sometimes you want the art to attract people, and sometimes you want the art to not be comfortable. You know, when they come in, they feel good about it, you know. I'm not going to yell at anybody today. I feel so nice looking at the board. I, I like those that stair very much because it's very much in keeping with that kind of building. And I like it because yeah. it's not so in your face. If we do in your face, we could do it on the sides and we could do it on the top. I really, I'm really like that. One. Yes. I, I think, uh, I haven't heard anybody say anything negative about this. I am like, I want to do that at my house. Right Commissioner, now. Commissioner yeah. Morris would also like to speak. Commissioner Morris. Thank you. Um, the only concern, and I really like the laser cut. I like all of the samples that have been shown. Um, the, my only concern with the laser cut metal is that I'm wondering if there's shadowing on the stairs and if it'll show up particularly in the dark, you know, when we're in the evening. And I'm trying to remember if those stairs are lit up in any way and maybe Director Hernandez can... Um, let us know if there is any light on the stairs, meaning like at the bottom of the stairs or some way that would light up the risers. I don't think is it, are we supposed to have light on stairs for ADA reasons? Well, so my concern is that we'll lose the artwork in the in the evening hours. Well, that's all. We have to review that. We okay, and then if there's shadowy, yeah. Oh, okay. Open during the day. It depends. During the day, um, it's not open. I mean, no, it's open for the, if the business offices behind the chambers, they're, they're the all these city, city, city hall. They're not, it's not open. So they don't close at five or six, like everybody, yeah. like it's open all the time? People go in and out? <laughs> no, nobody gets in and out there during the day. So it's usually after hours that it's open. That's when we have like a council meeting. And when, when it gets dark outside, but. Well, when building, when uh, design review is like at three, and there's other commissions that are over there during the day. Yeah, so the earliest would be any three, kind of commission three right? o'clock. Yeah, so during regular working hours, for the most part, it's not. Working. And so, if you think about how light moves over there, though, I'm I'm trying to remember if we get a shadowing from the building. So, and again, I really like the laser, like I'm drawn to it, but I don't want us to lose the artwork for the majority of the day. So I think we have to understand how do the stairs shadow them themselves and how does the building and the way the sun moves affect those stairs? So it's if we have light on them, no issue. Yeah, it's on the north side of the building, so it's gonna be shady virtually all the time, correct? Right. Um, but that's actually a good thing for art. So. Um, I, I think that it would be a matter of needed artificial lighting if we want to highlight it at night when people are coming to city council meetings or coming to late commission meetings. Um, you know, there could be, there could be. Very easy to add some solar lights. 
No, we're trying to go to dark skies. That's an uh goal is to have dark skies, so not having like down like stairs so that the dark sky um the dark sky ordinances are still met. Um, cap lighting becomes falls under safety. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I don't think we'll run into dark skies. We're not lighting not lighting up the facade of the building is room. That would definitely violate dark skies. Landscape. Uh, lights and exactly. Two exactly. Lights. exactly. One here, one there, yeah. on, the, on the corner, south of the way, and exactly. that's south of the western lights. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, let me ask you just a this particular example. I mean, the actual design of I this. I love it. Okay. <laughs> so how does everybody else feel about it? This particular, this particular, so the linear, it's, um, it's, there's not animal and foliage on it. Um, so it, it is figurative and nature based at the same time. It's, it is a curvilinear, there are no angles on it. I mean, I want to get your feel. You, I already know how you feel. Well, I like it because the artist picked it and I'm drawn to what artists pick. What was the action of the city council about this? Well, we're going to make a recommendation to city council, you know, that we, we're, we're not going so to. So they selected you? No, we selected him. Oh, you guys did, okay. No, you did too. Oh, okay. okay. I think the organic uh, um, figures are a nice contrast to like the angular, I mean, the prairie style building is just like very angular and plain and there's no curvature. So this is a nice contrast, I think. Okay, um, and then the the, uh, the complementary additions. We, you know, what are you guys thinking? You want to stay with the the corten or move over into uh, ceramic type? Oh, do you do anything in vinyl covers? Uh, I could, but also vinyls are things that do not last right. and are uh, cheap looking. Okay. Also, they use vinyls on public art when they ask for temporary things so they send them from storage to the site and they put it on the fence that causes the construction, you know, for temporary. It doesn't do anything. Actually, that's it We've got a couple of installations in our city. Um, they did, um, they did uh, on, you know, stone, on stone, um, on stone, brick, brick and or, um, what is it called? The, the big cinder block, cinder block construction. Yeah. And they put the tile, uh, the vinyl on it, understanding that in five to seven years, it's probably going to need to be replaced. But in some way, that temporary aspect was a little bit desirable in case yeah. you want to change, change yeah. it. Yeah. Because what I'm thinking of from, from a budgetary standpoint is, you know, it may be that in order for us to be able to expand the scope onto other elements, I don't think. I don't know the technology. Vinyl can't go on wood, right? It's really for you can stick it on anything. Really? You can put it on wood that expands the property. Yeah, the Nordot, the glue that they use. Yeah, the yeah. Someone yeah. did on his. They would put it on the yeah. yeah. You know, then the panel gets. Okay, so what I'm saying is that if, if the way that we can expand the scope of this is to do a less, slightly less expensive and probably a ten more temporary aspect. You know, um, it, I wanted to know if that's feasible because that it might allow us to do a roll. It doesn't look awesome, but it doesn't look good. I mean, it's, it looks cheap, plastic, you know. Like, okay. if, you I that, I mean, if that's what you like, sure, you know, we can do it, but it, it, it'll look like a bounce house. Sorry, it look good. what did you say? It'll look like a bounce house. Bounce house. What's, what's, what's the lifespan of the two different materials? So, the um. Oh my God! Sorry, uh, the, the metal, ver yeah, versus the. That's that's like. Is this for it? It'll last. Okay. Yeah, okay. It'll last so it won't like corrode, or we don't no. worry about rust. It corrodes on purpose, and then it stops yeah. corroding. Okay, great. Okay, great. It's, okay, it's great. So that seems like architectural structures and buildings and and bridges. Mm -hmm. it's all weatherized steel. Okay. It's yeah. Designed for bridges. Perfect. Yeah. So this is for it. Okay. Yes, I mean, so I think that's the thing. Yeah. Last a long time. I mean, you see them in Pompeii, right? And yeah. the only place right. to have them around. Uh, the only problem with that is if you really want to abuse it. 
strike it and you know break it. That's the only thing. But otherwise, sun can heat it all day long and nothing happens. So, so you know, this design nobody is saying may. Um, you probably have other, if this gets longer, you have other figurines. That's what I said. You know, yeah. if you decide to go that way, then I'll do the production drawing that I need, you uh -huh. know, for, for the laser cutting and with all the details. And I'll lay it down here so you can look at it. This is the view size and these are the elements on it. The only thing I might suggest so in terms of the, the topical, I mean, if you look at the flora and fauna here, you know, we do have lizards, we do have all kinds of cool right. bugs. Yeah. We have oak trees, we have apricot trees, we have some fruit, right. um, we have uh, evergreens, you know, conifers. Right. So, um, you know, those kinds of elements could be, you know, not literally, but yeah, stylized, stylized, and, stylized yeah. and put in yeah. to yeah. kind Make of complement. Exactly. Yeah. Pine cones, yeah. acorns, yeah. Pine cones, yeah. 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 All, All that cool. stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited about this. That was really cool. Thank you so much. Um, Okay, we're, we're gonna, I think what we should do is go ahead, thank you for your presentation. Um, we're going to discuss sure. and kind of come up with some um, some firm things, as well as maybe some ideas on scope steps, right. how, how we grow this thing. Uh, and then we'll come back and have another conversation. Right, yeah. Okay. If, if you wanna keep the renderings, you can have the, I mean, you can keep the whole thing, but it's kind of heavy to get it along. But, do, you, do you think we need to keep the whole thing? I, I would definitely like. I, would, I, I took pictures of that stuff. So. Yeah, I took yeah. pictures and I held it up to the screen, so it's in the recording. Oh, you, okay. you can pause it. Um, I I think this one suffices. Is this one the same as that? Yeah, this, yeah. yeah let me have that one too. <laughs> At least the two photos would yeah, be great. Yeah. All the other pieces it's though, we're good. To discuss with somebody, you know, yeah. yeah. You don't need this. No, no we don't need anything. The technical ones. No. No. no, please. Thank you. So. Um, um, Okay, so then we'll talk about the um, when you decide exactly the size of this and all that stuff. Um, if you're curious, I can give you some idea about, for instance, if you do the stairs and the side things and the top of the uh, uh, entrance. That could be yeah, somewhere in the combination of this material and this material, uh, somewhere between 25 to 30 times. Okay, somewhere in there. Did you guys all hear that? Yeah, were you, did you explain it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's enough. Okay. And from that, you say, okay, we scale down here or we expand here or whatever, whatever, you know. Okay, I think the commission will put some notes together. I'll email you, Jamie or myself will email you some of those things, and then we'll schedule another meeting. Thanks, Adrian. Appreciate it, Adrian. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Good person. Huh? I'm going to take pictures. I have a more Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Nice try. Are you staying tonight? Sure, no problem. All right. Yes. No problem. Okay. All right. Moving on from, uh, do, are there any, are there any, other comments anybody wants to make before we move on? Um, is everybody excited? Because I am. Okay. Um, yeah. Chair, can I ask you then what is the next step in this process and what is expected of staff? Because at this point, what we could do is either allow the commission to discuss it right now before you close this item, or we can take the notes of discussion right now. And I'd probably prefer there's some suggestion on a preference of the style, and then we can work with Adrian so he can bring back a suggestion like he was saying. Um, do, okay. Do, do we want, it sounded like there was some uh, consensus on the style of the metal on the risers and some other things. So if you want to discuss that now, now would be the time it would save us a month if we could do that now. Okay. Um, in the past, how's this process gone about? 
How's it gone? Yeah, when you like suggest something to council and then like council says yes or no. Well, um, most of the decisions did not involve council. The one that did, the last one with the parts, and they decided to not pursue that. Okay, so you guys can do stuff without council approval. Right. We used to be able to I don't I don't know if we can now. I, I would I would suggest that with art like this where you're changing a facility right. okay, changing uh, uh, a shoulder, which is where the hearts came in, that would change the, the monuments, um, that that would have to go to council. Yeah. If you're just installing art, I think that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, Maybe uh, what if we gave them two options? Because it sounded like there was consensus on the copper and the the quartz. Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, the copper. I thought the I thought the copper. The green copper and it's the red one. Yeah. The quartz. Right. Right. The quartz. In the case of the quartz. Um. Uh. And it sounded like there was consensus there. And then, but I think you really like the colorful ones. What if he could come back with two two options for the council? Well, to clarify what, what I like is on the, I think that the um, lower landscape elements that are vertical, namely the risers, the um, the panel, the, the concrete that lines the, the ramp, and I think there's a complementary one that's not as long on the right side. Those should be the curtain. They set the ground, if you will. Yeah. And then um, above that can be a combination of cortin or, or colorful, but not like I like I like tile that reflects the architecture and the surroundings. Even though sometimes I do want to shock, but I don't think the council chambers is where we want to do that. That's my opinion. Okay, uh, but I don't want it to blend in so far that we're like, okay, it still looks like a brown building. You know, I want it to definitely stand out. Um, so that that's my opinion. I I think the cortin should should definitely okay. set the base, the foundation of our art. I like I agree, and I think as long as he adds some more of Los Altos things, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I like the idea of the walls uh, to the left and the right as you're coming up to be the color. Okay. Um, so we're saying important on the risers? Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. okay. important on the risers. So when you say wall, you mean somebody's walking up a ramp. Uh, well, the, the stairs, the, stairs, okay. the walls yeah, there, and also smart. the the ramp for the yes. Um, yes. handicap ramp. Yeah. So would you agree that if you're looking at the chain, let me just use that chain, sorry. Mm -hmm. The risers. Yeah. But then also this part. That would be the. Yeah, the yes. yes. It sets the, the base. Yeah. And as you're coming up the stairs, the inside of the rail here, the inside of the rail here, oh. and then the inside of the rail of the ABA ramp. Color. Yes, ma'am. And then, to the extent we add modularity, so this is a kind of say the first level of modularity, and then the next level would be to either side. You know, I don't know how far you folks want to go, but I think you know it could be better. We can afford those other things. If he said we could do this for twenty-five to thirty k, then that's not going to be that much more. Okay. And this is basically modifying a building. I thought it was, I think he was going to say 150 or something like that. Like, you know, I know if I asked the landscaper to do that kind of art, they would be charging me a lot more than that. I think it's being very reasonable. I like, I like what you're suggesting, though. The modular idea. Yeah. And yeah. tell yeah. us to give us, you know, Oops. what, yeah. And then I think uh, that we're probably going to need to tell city council what we're doing before we go the, like, Order it. They probably have to leave before we order. Before before we order. order it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So we should go to them with a really strong. Yeah. I agree. Modular thing. Um, and really defend our minimal, the minimal amount that we really yes. believe is necessary to make this beautiful. They, that we're 100 percent behind this. We really want you to approve this, and then we'd like to expand maybe two other levels that would still be beautiful, but then that's more your discretion to decide. Either you know, the quartz and ties into the sculpture that's right out here. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and some of the others, Olympic wannabe and the thing down there. Can somebody identify those other three sculptures for me? Um, that he did? That he did? Allegria and Cosmic Bliss. Cosmic Bliss is at the corner of El Monte and um, uh, Springer. Yeah. It's like a tall, kind of whimsical. And it flows in the wind. Yeah. And Celebrita's 
Oh, the the, the, the windmill type thing? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the colorful windmill? Sorry? The colorful yes. windmill? Yes, it is. Oh, it's it's the third one? What is the third? Cosmic Bliss. It's also moving. Kind of. I thought there were three, though. Celebria, Cosmic Bliss, and there was yeah. Allegria. Allegria? Allegria. L A E G R I A. And it's at Village Park. I just spelled his last name. Alt Litman? Yeah. Oh, I, I think it's just Alt so, um, Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that his name? Do you speak to you? What is missing from our discussion? I, I actually, I think we have enough information now. And, yeah. and top of the recording, it sounds like it was a very simple consensus here. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so uh, we can really give this to him and let him run with it. Um, Great. Color, we're looking at the uh, cordon on the risers. Um, and then to go ahead and expand the color on the sides of the, of the steps and the sides of the ADA ramp as well. And also cordon on this. On this. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah, what exactly. we the sides of the steps, the sides of the risers, the same, and, and the, the, the color on every other right. vertical. Yeah. Every other vertical. And then I would say the first, the first, this be the first modular, and then the adding the freeze, the second modular component, and then the final third component. So, sure, if we just tell him to do three sure. modulars, like, yes. modular. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I have is like three levels. Yeah, that are levels. Perfect. And then he can kind of imagine how those levels look. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then we can we can so I could assume that we'll schedule them for the next count or commission yes. meeting yeah. in September. Yes. Right. Well, yeah. We can get a, a discussion on price and then we'll work uh, that together and then I'll go ahead and either inform I'll talk to the city manager of how we're going to inform council of this okay. either inform or uh, actually have a, a formal approval. So I'll talk to them about. Commissioner Morris, did you hear all that? I heard it all, and I have a question. I'm wondering if we need to ask or present some scope of what we're uh, thinking about to the city council before we ask him to do a whole lot more work. Like, it feels like we may need to get approval for this project before yeah. we ask him to spend more time and energy on this. Wait until we see how much money it is. Got it. You, you want a comment, Commissioner? It seems like the city council doesn't want it, and we do all this work. It seems like a waste of time, so just asking them, do you even want this? They do want it. Oh, we know that. So know let, that. Me, oh, let, me, that. let me inform council. Uh, um, okay. Let me inform council of what's going on and the direction we're going, because I don't think we're too off from the final product anyway. So I can even show them some of the pictures, mm -hmm. and I'll let, uh, I'll let the city manager or the mayor decide how we're going to handle that. Should we cut it off now and say, let's go for approval? But I think they probably want more information like price as well. Yeah, so, exactly. I'm, I'm confident okay. they would. So let, let me get a feel for that first. So in the in the time that we send this to Adrian, let me get a feel for that with council, and then I'll, I'll get back to you next meeting. The, the I'd appreciate that. He, his time is precious, and we're not paying him at this point. I don't want to waste any artist's time if we can't even move forward on it. So. Well, we have to be honest, right? There is possible we go through with him and council then doesn't approve. We're, we're not promising anything, but but that's the, the world of approving the project, right? But but if but if they say we want to know how much it is before of course, we, we have to provide the, the very first yeah, time we show them, exactly. we need to give they're going to want to know. And they're they're gonna gonna know. we have that. He's given us a very quick thumbnail on the minimal project. Right. Um, so, you know, it's pretty easy to see from a square footage standpoint how it might grow from that um, in terms of adding other elements. Being pre-approved with your annual budget, I think price is going to be less of an issue as long as you're within budget than it is going to be what they're going to be seeing every time they come into their meeting. Okay. So I'll run this, I'll run this okay. by, by the mayor. We'll see the only thing means. I would suggest is that tell them that we're not, th this color representation does not represent what we're thinking. No, no, no. I, I, will, I will just brief okay. them on it. Um, there is one other aspect, though, that he brought up that I think was important and we might consider is, do you want to have community input or do we not um, at this point? I mean, we represent the community, but we always have the opportunity 
to do a little bit of outreach. So, um, you know, that's, for example, we could do that. We could literally put out a notice in the city manager's bulletin to do a little online survey or something. Um, you know, just, just a thought. Um, historically, we have not. I think, that, you know, I would say that we're nominated for the positions to make the decisions that best represent our community. Okay. Anybody else? I concur. I think I agree with that. Commissioner Morris? My only comment on that is that's what these meetings are for, for the public to be able to come and give their comments. And this is very unusual for me to say something like that because I'm about expanding our reach and letting people know what we're doing. Um, but I do feel like historically the art commission has done, made decisions in their meetings and move forward with them. And I think we can follow that at this point. Fair to suggest that um, we'll, we'll be bringing back this back to agenda in the um, September meeting. We yeah. should, that is our opportunity to invite the public to, to come and talk. Every time this has been agendized, that is an opportunity for the public. To come exactly. And so, so, and it has been agendized at least twice. Yeah. Um, this RFP. So, but we can proactively so. put a little blurb in the city manager update um, just to make sure because you know people don't necessarily read our agendas. So. I think we can make a little extra effort to be inclusive. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, are we done with this topic? Do you have what you need, staff? Yes. Okay. Moving on to item four, scope for maintenance. Or to discuss the updated cost of sculpture maintenance. Is there a staff report? Yes. Uh, yes, I, I have a brief report for the commission. Um, the Staff has went ahead and I, I uh, in, in your report in front of you, um, I have given you the updated costs. I reached out to Preservation Arts, who did the, um, who's, who's done in the past, uh, by my records that I was uh, handed, um, they've done uh, maintenance work on some of our sculptures, um, and they were actually requested for a quote to do maintenance work on two pieces of art, Musical Gamble, I hope I spelled that right because it was spelled yes, differently yes. in two different places online. And then imagine that. Um, so with those two, they had proposed, uh, they had submitted a proposal for the maintenance of those two items uh, a couple of years ago, not quite a couple of years ago. Um, and I asked them to update those proposals. What's included as an attachment? Is there updated? Um, and I went ahead and put together this uh, brief little matrix of the maintenance costs that they'll be requesting for the maintenance of those two items. Um, and then looking back, and that's an outdated number, I imagine, in our spreadsheet for art in the city, but the value I also listed as well. So I just, seeing that discrepancy between how much it's going to cost and how much that art is valued at, I just wanted to bring it to the commission again so they can make a final decision. And I just have to make a phone call to get those things maintained right now because they're the only um, organization that's that's willing to maintain it to that level. So I can I can talk to them about getting it done if the commission decides to. And then here's an opportunity for the commission to have discussion on what to do if they don't want to do that. Maybe. Okay. Thanks. I was wondering what those two things are. Art the artwork. Uh, yeah. It's in, it's why? in the packet. Do you want to go ahead? And, okay. and why is it that? Why, why is the maintenance cost so high? Um, the full estimate and treatment is in here, and that's that's the going rate from this uh, organization to do art that's delicate like that. So, so their condition report is starting, it starts with condition report, and then the treatment proposal is also attached. It's right in the condition report to describe what they have to do, yeah. what's needed. Um, it's a full refurbishment. Well, I'm just like looking at this, not knowing anything about it. Why don't we just buy two of them brand new? It's cheaper than maintaining them. It's not clear that this is a this is a there's city assets and city assets and it's a piece of art. It, it, it's not a production piece. Trying to buy something new like that would probably be more. Then why is the value at seventeen? I just wanted to list the values that we had. Those are once again oh, old. Cities, although it's a city's yeah. estimated value back with the last time that that was updated. So I'm not sure what the updated values might be. This was actually decided back in 2022 that we were gonna. And with the value, some um, inflated 
version of the original cost. Have, we didn't have values we at that point. No, no one actually appraised it. Because if we haven't appraised it, for all we know, the value is three times this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it, it probably is. It probably yeah. is. I mean, these are really unique pieces, and um, they're fixtures in the parks. And and so we at the time thought, and I think we voted to yeah, go ahead did. with the maintenance. We voted to have it. It didn't happen. Yeah. And so we're now at the point where the price has gone up, probably because of inflation. And but I think we're hoping that we can just get it done. Well, when did um, these go in? Um, years ago. Yeah. Did you guys calculate a lifetime cost of these things? It was before our time. Okay. If it had installed in 1991, was mm -hmm. the first time that they needed maintenance? In 1992. They needed maintenance four years ago. We finally voted on it two years ago. So when was the, the previous maintenance? Don't know. Okay. And this is coming out of the art budget? Yeah, the art fund. The art fund. You know, the the reality is that um, it, it is very. I mean, when when I saw it before this meeting, it was, I was startled. But then I sat back and I, you know, I'm sorry to come back to you with this. Yeah. I, I I did ask the question, how much is the art actually worth? I thought originally that might be, you know, something that was either out of date or possibly tied to some inflationary. Expansion of the cost that we paid. I don't. Do we know what we paid for those? One one thing I'll say to what you just said um, is it is the art fund, not the park building or art Right, the arts and the No, I'm okay. talking about the, the on the value right. line. Is that somehow tied to the cost? Well, I don't know what you paid for your house, but I know what I paid for my house, and it's worth about twelve times what I paid for it. Sure, but so, that's that. I mean, art art does the same thing. Yeah. It, it may not be at the same rate of Los Altos housing, but it's definitely going to go up unless, unless you know, there are some factors that make it out of trend, right, or make right. it un, uninviting. But so far, we haven't gotten feedback from the community that these are hated sculptures. They're they're yeah. loved sculptures, um, and so you know, I think. The question is, do we need to go get these appraised to find out if the, the cost of maintaining them is worth it? But yeah. frankly, I would imagine this value was noted in 2022, and we don't really know the source of that, how that was calculated. The co I can tell you that the cost, this is a large, uh, certainly the the musical gam gambon is a gamble or gambon? Yeah. I thought it was gamble. Anyways, is a large scale structure. So to get, get people structure today yeah. is probably going to be at least a hundred thousand. Yeah, easy. I get people emailing me all the time. How about this artist? Then I go online and I look right. them up. I'm like, well, this artist is one hundred and twenty five dollars, one hundred twenty five thousand dollars for this piece. Yeah, I mean, we we could scale down, but you're still talking fifty to a hundred yeah, okay, for a scale. scale. The other one, the other the other Can object. You do RFP for the the maintenance bids. No, uh, this is the, the group that we've used in the past, and they have the skills. I don't think there was another uh, organization that did the full evaluation for this price. Is, is the quote available for, for review? I'm sorry? It's in the packet. It's in the packet. The oh, I, put the, I put the entire packet in there. Is it line items on what they're doing? Yeah. Yes. 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 That's why I included it. You're not I feel like the public arts commission had this discussion. Yeah. Yes. This has all been done in detail. Right. Everything's on the record, and everything. We contacted every art restoration company yes. in California. I don't think the restoration and reconditioning is in question. I think the only question that we need to be prepared to answer is: Here is the value of the art. Here is what it costs to maintain it. If we were to not recondition it, it will deteriorate to the and if we were to replace it, it would probably be more expensive. I'm if sure. we can make that that statement, then we don't freak out at $38,000 to restore it. Am I wrong or am I right? The value is not the current value. Agreed. But we cannot answer anybody with certainty what the current appraised value is. Unless somebody here can. No do one that. else in this town does that. Why are we held to such a high standard? What do you mean? Okay. You understand what I'm saying. No, I don't. There are 
so many things in this town that need to be fixed and people don't value them properly and they take things on and they take things on and they take things on and they don't fix it the sewers the roads we should ah, fix the art okay Okay, sorry. No, no, I, I, that's why I asked you. I wanted yeah. to know exactly what you were talking about. I would suggest that I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you, but right now our scope is this. I know. And so from that standpoint, I want to make sure that we are doing our diligence. I'm not saying we have to have an appraisal. All I'm saying is I would throw into question the value in this chart that the value is understated, That's which makes the maintenance look alarming. Um, but even if, let's say it wasn't, let's say that these were actually the values, which they, uh, they aren't. You and I know that the mod structures this big would be enormous and probably the value of these objects because we haven't received you know, a large amount of negativity from the community about them. We would have heard about it. This community doesn't stay quiet. If they didn't like these, then we would have heard about it. Um, to replace them would be a lot more money than what we're talking here. A lot more than um, $80,000. Well, what's driving the maintenance? Because I'm looking at this report and there's nothing wrong with these things. And other than like like cosmetic things. It's structured, it says it's structurally stable. Well, but the cosmetic is everything. You don't want it rusting up. You don't want it peeling. You don't want it, I mean, come on. I'm looking at it too. It's like there's equipment rental of 11700 for both. Those can be done, the, that rental is the exact same time. So what what is going on here? Like, why is this bid as two separate things when it's the exact same thing in the same field? I'm not an expert. In this have you, have we asked the, the staff if they could fix them, and they said it wasn't in their capabilities. That's why we had to go to art restoration. Is, is anyone complaining about these structures right now? No. Is it because we don't like the way it looks in this commission? No, no it's because that's our not. responsibility. It's our responsibility to the asset. Our structures and our art up. I'm going to pause us. Commissioner Morris, you have a comment? I do. I have a comment and I have a couple questions. So um, one is I think we have the responsibility to maintain the art that we purchase and we spent money on it. I think these um, maintenance costs are high. I do agree with Commissioner Ye that we have a redundancy on the travel labor um, section that maybe we could ask if they're going to be working on two sculptures, if that amount can't be adjusted in some way because they'll already be here working on one, they'll work on the other one. So I think we need to look at having an adjustment to that since they're doing both um, and they would do them probably at the same time. Um, the other is that, um, yeah, we don't know what the value is obviously now, but I think if we look up the artists and see what they're doing and what the costs of their current sculptures are, we'll find that it's more expensive. Um, I have a question that maybe some of the art, other um, former art commission, now park commissioners may know the answer to. If we were to maintain our art on a more regular basis, so if we did something on a yearly basis with pretty much every piece of art or at least half a piece of, you know, half of the art collection that we have in the city, could we keep the costs um, down by doing that? Because we'd be maintaining things more regularly. I feel like a lot of our art needs uh, maintenance right now when I look at it. So I'm wondering, do the commissioners have uh, input, the um, former art commissioners, now park commissioners, the three that are there, do you have a feel for whether we would have a better um, outcome financially if we did it on a more regular basis? I want to make sure that we're in scope of our agenda. I don't want to go outside of the scope of this agenda topic. Right now we're being asked to uh, give a recommendation on this particular these two particular pieces of art. I, I agree with what you're talking about, Commissioner Morris, and that, you know, scoping out our process of maintenance, but I want to make sure, I don't want to go outside the scope of this agenda. Okay, then fine. My input on that, I feel like we've already gone out of the scope in all due respect, but my input on that is we own this artwork. We have a responsibility to take care of it. If we need to future agendize how we treat our artwork in this uh, city, then I think we need to future agendize that, but we have a responsibility to do it, to get this job done and have our artwork, artwork looking as pristine as possible. <clears throat> Like the 
if some, someone said that the leg is bent, I'm looking at it, how do they know the leg is bent? It looks like it's part of the artwork. This company came out and inspected all the structures that we asked them to inspect. Can we get the companies that bid it? I want to see how. No one else came even close, and we only got three bids. And it was over two years ago. What was the, what was the, uh, I don't know the scope. We're not going to really get it, really get that now. What we need to do is we need to discuss here how we want to move forward on this. Okay. At that point, you know, there's a whole, if you read the art commission, um, the previous art commission's process book, Mr. Yeh, you will understand precisely how they go through these quote processes. Okay. Um, at this point, we're not going to, Educate, you know, go through the education again. I've already done the reading. Hopefully, you will do the reading and understand how that works um, so that your questions can be answered. I'm not going to judge whether um, a, a, uh, a restorer's work is something that should be done. Um, what we have to look at is the amount of money. If, as Commissioner Morris has suggested, perhaps as we go through this process, we can ask them to see if there's any benefit of consolidating the work to save us some money, that's that's something we can certainly do. Um, but to question whether a pipe is bent or not as was part of the original work, I, I don't think that's our role to get that detail. Uh, and then as far as questioning the bid process, it's already documented, you're free to, to look that up. Um, any other comments as far as, uh, are, is, is anybody willing to recommend that we go through an, an appraisal? Or do we want to simply say we recommend pursuing or declining this maintenance? Chair, if I may, um, you were talking about staying on within the uh, the item itself and the scope of the yes. item. That's not an appraisal. Is not something that's on this item. Okay. This item right now, Parks and Rec or Parks Arts and Rec Commission will discuss and ask questions and can either take action or discuss action on these two sculptures at a future meeting. Okay, so what we could suggest taking action on, on a, in a future meeting to ask for. Yeah, and that's fine if that's if that's what you want to do. But action on an appraisal right now is off of the topic. This topic is either yes, we go forward, or no, we don't go forward. And, and we need more discussion. Yeah, we need more discussion. Okay. So, so. Does anybody want to? And then I would like, we can take action, i.e. we can have a vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, correct. Does anyone want to make a motion at this time? I would like to make a motion. I move that we have, we coordinate and ratify a, a repair from preservation arts on root musical gamble and imagine that only because they did the other two and they did a great job on it. Second. Do you want in the motion that they did the other? No, I, that was just a side. I, I needed to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, sorry. We need to move forward with the repair. Yes, please. Would you accept a friendly amendment? Yes. And let me suggest it um, with the proviso that the um, that staff could consider uh, seeing if there's any benefit of consolidating the projects to save any operational cost. As long as staff doesn't think that it's going to piss those guys off and then they won't do it because then we don't have anybody. Staff, all staff can say on that is we've already talked about this. <laughs> okay, great. Do that. Thank you. That's yes. good information. Yeah, it's not because they just have equipment out there. They have to pull those out individually. Yeah. So I really very, they're very delicate. Yeah, you know my friend Preservation are saying that two projects in one place, there's no economies to scale. This is their, this is their, this is really? their price, yes. This is their business. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. I'll, I'll mention it to them, but uh, but with the discussion I've had support, and yeah, go ahead. If that's the friendly amendment, I'll no, mention it. I would draw it. I would draw it. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I could. And I second. I do it anyway, but. I second that motion. Seconded it. Sorry. It's all good. It's good. Okay. Um, do we have any discussion now? I have nothing else. Commissioner Morris, do you have anything? No. Okay. Then we're ready for a vote. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Yeh. No. Uh, Commissioner Couture. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Valadez. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Morris. Yes. 
I'm sorry, Chair Valadez, but I have your vote, but it's I right. apologize for that. Um, oh, Vice, okay. Vice Chair Corrigan. Yes. Okay, and uh, Commissioner Moore. Yes. That passes five to one. Thank you. You know, I, I'm now remiss. I forgot to ask for public comments on this item. Um, there were none submitted. There's no yeah, cards. Card. Card. Like, card. okay. card. okay. So I apologize. Uh, so no, no, we, 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 I looked to see if there were any cards. Yeah. I, I didn't see any. I would have interrupted you. Thank you. No, I would have. <laughs> yeah, yes, you would have. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. All right, and thank you for the for the excellent staff report. Um, it was very informative. Uh, all right, so we're done with our items. Um, moving on to informational items, summer concert series recap. Um, just wanted to give an update to the commission. The uh, recreation department ran their six concerts plus one. The plus one was the um, symphony, the Peninsula Symphony that started us off on a Saturday in June, I believe it was. Um, and, uh, and through those six concerts, we probably averaged around 400, 300, right about that number. Um, so uh, we're probably a little, we had, we started to tail off at the end, um, maybe 150 to 200 people at the last one, I think it was. Um, but our high was almost 500 at the first one. And the first couple were pretty close to that number at Grant Park. Um, so just wanted to give everybody a recap. Everybody that, that we saw uh, going out there was having a good time. They were dancing and the bands were really good. Um, I do want to publicly uh, commend our uh, my my staff in recreation for choosing the band because I, I heard pretty much every one of them for you know some longer than others um, and they were really good they were really good so we hope the community enjoyed those we do plan on we're already setting it up uh, the dates for next year to get it, getting ready and then once the new year starts we'll be selecting the bands for that so um, and um, and yeah so just wanted to give an update on the, that great program that yeah we're on. I I heard nothing but great stuff. I think the only thing is the very last one. It's because everybody's trying to take a vacation before school starts. That's what we've heard. Kind of what happens is people don't show up for that one. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll see. But I think the 150 people that were there, I think, really yeah, they all had a good time. Really good that, that day too. Um, and the next update we have is just the call for art. I wanted to update everyone that for the gallery uh, here at the community center, we put the call, the call for art. This commission had requested that we delay it a little bit and push the deadline into September so that the schools could get it. Um, and we are uh, reaching out to the schools um, right. at, through, I forgot, what do they call it? Uh, I forgot what that's called. Uh, Peach Star. Peach Star. There you go. Peach Star. Mm -hmm. There's a system that we are able to put the. Uh, the, the so we get the flyers directly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I saw the city manager update. It was great. Uh, yeah. So so with that, uh, we are putting it out. And that only goes to the uh, the middle schools and the elementary schools in this district. So if any of the commissioners uh, have any connections to high school art teachers or something like that. Um, just to get that word out, feel free to, to, to speak to them or to give us a kind of a heads up on, on what we can do just to get the word out. Uh, the deadline is still set for September 5th at this time. Um, so that will give all the schools, which should be in session now, I believe, yeah. uh, give them a, a few weeks to, to see a, see the information that we're putting out. So. Does anybody want to call the high school? I could. My son's a teacher there. I could ask him to if just you, tell yeah. the... That's, that's what I would say, and, and lead them to the, the link flyer. for the yeah, flyer the or anything like that. Yeah. So that's all. That's the only updates we have right now. Okay. Thank you. Um, now we move on to commissions. We don't have any subcommittees. <clears throat> any oral reports from commissioners or requests for future agenda items? Uh, any commissioner want to give any report on their activities or anything that they are doing? I'm just I'm putting a pause on the brochure right now because um, I feel like there are sculptures that we're still finding out if we're keeping them, like the dog at Grant Park, the um, oh my god, the the Mary Mead Park one. Yeah, thank you. Um, Serengeti and Mary Mead Park. I think there's one more. So, what's going on with Serengeti? It's well, expired. Expired. the loan is expired, Can so we're trying to figure yeah. out what, if they can buy it. yeah, what's happening with it. Okay. Um, I just, you know, talking about using artist's time economically, I feel bad, like, making her revise the brochure and then, you know, change it up again, so, and it costs us money every time she revises it. Thank you. Any 
Anybody else? A future agenda item. Mm -hmm. So there, um, I got uh, a coloring book from the city of Palo Alto's art department mm -hmm. that was for kids and it had all the sculptures and it's a, um, coloring book. Yeah, Have you cool. seen it? I cool. think it would be fun. I'll bring it next time. I didn't bring it this time, but I'll, cause I didn't get home in time. Um, I'll bring it next time so we can look at it. It's kind of cool. How did they disperse that? I don't even know. So Somebody cool. gave it to me that lives in Palo Alto. Oh, I kind of did. Oh, is that maybe that's what it was in, was the post, yeah. Cool. You can also distribute it digitally. Kids yeah. these days are coloring online, right? Yeah. These yeah. are graphic software. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Would it make sense? Packages are cheaper and cheaper every day. Sorry. Um, would it make sense to put a future agenda item to discuss whether we take the existing brochure, which is beautiful, and just do some reprints for the October 19th um, table that we're going to do so we have something to hand out to people? Yeah, yeah. Are we out? Is that the support from the commission? They're really popular. So right now we have two possible future agenda items that have support from more than one commissioner looking into the possibility of a coloring book, whether whether paper or online. And then future another future agenda, a, 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 temp, a, a, a small number of brochures or, or a handout for, yeah, for a table. Because Manny can print them. He's done it before mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, just maybe yeah. even 50, 100, just a handout. Yeah. We can have one of those in the city. One of those industrial printers. No, it's not really industrial. It's just not that many. Yeah. Not that fancy. Maybe That could be part of the. You're talking about distributing it at the movie. Yeah. And that could be part of the discussion of the things you do at that table. Because that's that's the agenda items I have for actually next month is already Adrian Littman. <laughs> and then the things to do at the movie, and the then paper. and the chair and I will get together as as per scheduled. Um, right. Talk about the coloring book, how we fit that in. Okay. I have two future agenda items I'd like to put forth. Yeah. Uh, one is the uh, sculpture maintenance, the art maintenance. I'd like to discuss that uh, more deeply and how we can work with that in a different way and perhaps bring the cost down. Um, so I don't know if there's support for that, but that's one agenda item. And the other is I'd like to ask for CEQA um, training of some sort for all of us. I think it's important that we get that. Um, is there Anybody? support for the first agenda? I need um, for sculpture maintenance to have a process discussion, how we could possibly um, look at it to lower cost, increase frequency and lower cost. Sure. I would support it, but what I would suggest is maybe we bring in somebody from uh, the preservation group to educate us. Yeah, that'd be great. Because I think that, I, yeah, I think that it would be helpful if people understood why it's expensive and why you have to have professional restorers do the work. When you say preservation group, to whom are you referring? Yeah. Oh, the, the, com the, yeah, the company provider here. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> So I'd like to have that be an a, a agenda item so that we can actually discuss it because I don't feel comfortable making comments about what was just discussed. Um, but I appreciate the support and I hope we, we can bring in the preservation group and be able to ask them some questions. I think we need to do this. We have a number of pieces that need to be discussed. Okay, thank you. And then is there support for the CEQA training? Sure, I don't worry. Commissioner Morris just suggested. Yeah, you know what yeah. 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 yeah, I was like, why? Why do we need CEQA training? She's asking for it. Sorry, I thought, sorry, Commissioner Morris, I wasn't sure why you would. Okay, so why one of the reasons is it is brought up at our meeting. So we had our speaker this evening from, uh, you know, our public speaker speaker brought it up, and she's brought it up a number of times, and I think. Um, I certainly don't know enough about it. Perhaps even staff can just guide us in how we can learn more about it and understand it more. But I think it has a lot to do with parks and there is a whole environmental um, aspect of, you know, when we're making changes to our parks and we say something CEQA exempt, I think it would be good if we all understood what that meant and the impact of it. That's so an agenda item. I mean, there's a lot of materials online that you could read and, and maybe uh, director, Fernandez, and so 
What are your thoughts? Because I, I, isn't that getting outside our scope? Yeah, I would have to speak to the chair about this, uh, about agendizing something. Um, I think CEQA is, CEQA is less of a, a park issue. It's more of a project management thing. So understanding CEQA is great. I don't know that you need to discuss it or have training on it. I could actually provide you materials and links that you can educate yourself yeah, through. Urban Wagner has a bunch. Okay. Yeah, Urban Wagner School has a bunch on art. Yeah, exactly. I could I could lead this commission in the right direction where they can train themselves rather than taking up the valuable time at a meeting for a discussion uh, with some professional or um, yeah. somebody that really it's more of a project management thing. And then it goes into I think it does lean into out of the uh, the scope of this. Uh, yeah. Out of the purview of this commission, yeah, chances of the public coming in and complaining about CEQA in general. Well, yeah, I, yeah and I mean, CEQA, CEQA regulations dictate certain studies be done under certain projects that's either exempt or they're CEQA studies. Um, but that is not the purview of this commission to, to get into the CEQA items. Now, understanding it, it's a it's a good thing for everyone. So I can I can get those materials, and if that would be enough, we can go from there. Okay. I think that would be helpful. Sure. So we have basically an ask for staff. Commissioner Morris, sure. see if this satisfies you that we you we are making an ask of staff. I'm sorry, I can't yeah, hear. So, yeah, you, you, the, the Office of Planning and Research has a, a CEQA guidelines, a CEQA 101 course that's online. <laughs> I can still provide material. Yeah. Okay. If you go on YouTube, basically any developer outside of California is gonna is gonna deal with this, and there's always YouTube videos. Yeah. Yep. You can even get educated on what it takes to restore. Um. Let's we'll see. Uh, okay. It sounds like everybody's clear on what CEQA is, and that it doesn't seem to apply to our scope. So that's fine. I, I'd really appreciate getting more information about it, though. Because I think when we're discussing having trees removed and how we're going to deal with playgrounds and so on, it might be something we do want to understand so we make the correct decisions. So, but I that if I'm the only person that think that thinks that way, that's fine. I can, you know, get the information and educate myself. I think it's important um, to for us to understand all of the processes that that the city goes through to approve and reject mm -hmm. and undergo projects, even if it's outside of our purview, so that we understand the language that people are using, you know, so that we're aware, if, even if it's outside our preview, purview, and we will never make a decision regarding the CEQ, whether something is subject to or exempt from CEQA, you should know what it is um, if we're part of the city-led, you know, government process. So if we can just go individually to outside resources and educate ourselves about all of these things, that'd be awesome. Okay, I don't have anything to report. Um, any final comments? Madam Chair? I'm sorry? I'm, I'm sorry, there's no further comments in the meeting. Yeah, the, the, the time for you wanted to make I can, I can talk to her. Yeah, I think she so, wants to make a public comment. Yeah, and so if you come at the beginning of any commission meeting, any commission meeting, you can, right at the very sure. beginning after the pledge, you can make a public comment not that's not on our agenda. Okay. I'm so sorry. I wish you would have spoken, but we can't open it right now to you. Okay. But you can also submit your stuff in writing at any time to our commission. Yeah. All right. Thank you for coming, though. Okay. All right, then uh, meeting's adjourned. Thank you.